The Rock is delivering a smackdown on the Biden campaign. Dwayne Johnson is refusing to back Joe Biden this year after lending his endorsement in the last election. The superstar dropped kicking the sorry state of Biden's America while speaking with Fox and Friends. Am I happy with the state of America right now? Well, that answer is no. Do I believe we're going to get better? I, I believe in that. I'm an optimistic guy, and I, I believe we can get better. Um, the endorsement that I made uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. I'm not going to do that because what I realized, what that caused back then was something that tears me up in my guts back then and now, which is division. And I wouldn't do that because my goal is to bring our country together. And as Joe Biden loses big time celebrities, his pals in the media are finding new ridiculous ways to attack Donald Trump and his voters, like bringing on a cult expert. For the good news is it's not permanent and people wake up and they are embarrassed and ashamed, as I felt in 1976. But more and more people are leaving the MAGA cult. It's important that people not just yell at people who are still trapped in this delusion. Ask questions in a respectful, curious way that gets them to start realizing they've been conned and that their minds have been hijacked. Katie, I don't know who that guy is, but um, he apparently has a solution to uh, taking Trump voters away from Trump. Uh, we're living in an alternate reality. Why do you think he says that? I don't think he really knows what he's talking about. He's this weird, cold expert, someone that Jesse might have on his show <laughs> at some point, right? Did you interview him for your book? Maybe. Oh, I should. You should thanks for the next part reminding two. everybody about the book. You're welcome. Yes. Still I'm here, here, I'm here to do that. Together. I uh, think what The Rock was saying was interesting in the sense that we're dealing with the same situation that we were dealing with in terms of candidates as we were in 2020. Here we are again. And he's mm -hmm. saying that he made a mistake, essentially, by endorsing Joe Biden. And he talks about the reason why he endorsed him is he wanted to bring the country together. And Joe Biden ran on division. And clearly, none of that has been fulfilled over the past four years. Now, he's not saying that he's going to vote for Trump necessarily. And he's on this idea of wanting to bring everyone together and that everyone should, should agree on these things. He pushes back on the woke agenda. But I think it really just clarifies that Joe Biden ran as a moderate. He ran as someone who was going to be a president for everybody. And he's actually been a very far left divis divisive president. And people are starting to realize that in the sense of admitting that they were wrong about what they, the choices that they made publicly in 2020. One of the things, Greg, that he talks about, he talks about the woke and cancel culture. And he says that uh, it's more important that you be real and honest and not worry about being canceled. Easy yeah. for him to say. Well, you know what? It's, uh, if that's what he said on the air, imagine what he really feels. Because, Jen, I mean, he was tiptoeing through the tulips on that topic. Generally, they don't want to say anything. And it's true. Uh, it's only big stars who can speak up because they can withstand whatever follows. They're not going to be canceled. But that's why it's important. You know, Clint Eastwood had to wait. Arnold Schwarzenegger had to wait. Uh, Sly Stallone, Bruce Willis. These guys were not liberals. Most of them were all Republicans. But they couldn't speak out until they were big enough to speak out because they couldn't be canceled by the awful publicists in Hollywood. But I want to, I got to point out that, that uh, cult expert guy. He looks like an Heaven's, <laughs> a Heaven's Gate member who missed the comet. Do you remember they were trying to jump on a comet? Uh, if Trumpism is a cult, it is the worst cult in history because people come and go as they please. Everything is wholly transparent. There's nothing is secretive about it. And people seem to be having a good time. It doesn't seem like they're terrified of reprisals. If this is a cult, then so is Oktoberfest. I mean, Trump, if you want to, I think what you could say about Trumpism, if it's an ism, is that it's more like your favorite team, where you root for, the, you root for your guy and you root against the other guy, but you still can hang out with the other guy's fans. It's not a big deal. But they can't, but the other team can't do it. Trump, uh, people who are pro Trump have no problems pulling over and helping you change a tire. They don't care if you got a Biden bumper sticker on your car, they'll do it. Now, it's not, it's it not a two way street. Yep.
Okay. All right, Jesse, the last time we had one can one former president run against a, a uh, sitting president was when Grover Cleveland ran against Benjamin Harrison. Okay. I didn't know either of them. Don't look at me. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> um, and uh, right now, it's bad news for Biden because everyone is asked, when you think about it, were, was your life better under Trump or under Biden? And apparently, 60% say their life is better bad under Biden. Only 47 percent say it was bad under Trump. That's why it's so easy to vote this year, because four years ago, you had the guy. It wasn't like you don't remember what it was like four years yeah. ago. Everybody remembers. The only person who doesn't remember is an old elderly man with a hazy memory. <laughs> But that's an advantage as a voter because it's so fresh. And that's why people are now saying, well, wait a second. I don't like where we're going. And The Rock, I think this is a business move because he's on the board of directors for the company that owns the UFC mm. and WWE. Mm. He knows how many men are out there, how many fans he has. And as a guy like that in the circles that he hangs out with, I am sure he gets such a hard time on the weekends by his buddies. <laughs> Can yeah. you, you, you endorse that guy? Are you crazy? I give him so much grief. I mean, you know how it is when, when we in, play in Hollywood. Golf. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dana White you're probably his has patty, right? Not when you wrap <laughs> that. Yes. But yeah. when you're someone at that level, uh, like a Tom Cruise, you don't want to be political at all. Yep. And, and Tom was good at that. Michael Jordan was good at that. The Rock blew it. And I'm sure he regrets this. And in terms of the cult thing, I just think what they're trying to do is socially shame people for being associated with the Trump movement. They're trying to say, look at these freaks. They wear colorful outfits. They wear silly hats. And you don't want to be associated with them at all. But deep down, you know what, Judge? They're jealous that Biden voters don't have the kind of passion that Trump voters have for Trump. And, you know, Jessica, it's true. They barely show up for uh, for Biden. But let me ask you this. You know a lot of Trump supporters. Do we need to be deprogrammed? Be careful. That's why I come to work every day. <laughs> no, I, it is correct that conservatives are much more tolerant of liberals and spending time with them than liberals are of conservatives. That shows up especially in the dating data that a liberal would never consider going out with a conservative in the Trump era. Obviously, things have been different since 2016. Mm -hmm. um, so James Carville and Mary Matlin are not happening round two there. <laughs> um, I think The Rock, yes, he's promoting stuff, but did get a lesson in you can alienate people when you put a perspective out there like that. He's a smart businessman. Uh, but we don't know how he's voting. He could very well vote for Joe Biden again. He's just not going to talk about it. And I thought that that was an interesting undercurrent, you know, that Will didn't really push him on. He didn't say, well, what does that mean? He just let him say, my endorsement led to a lot of division. And that really tears me up because he is someone who is liked by people on the left and on the right. And that's a pretty rare thing. There are very few kind of iconic people mm -hmm. that are beloved on both sides. But you said in your lead in question to Jesse, you know, it's just bad news for Biden. The jobs report today was a monster. I wait, mean, every wait three months. Fine when the it gets when job. it gets revised yes. down. Also, the part-time jobs and there's data looking at this. That's a trend that's been happening. It obviously was accelerated through COVID with people opting into that. You still don't add 15 million jobs, and even taking away what we got back from COVID is adding jobs at a faster clip than Trump to go up to 303. Thousand when it was supposed to be two hundred and fourteen, but it's is an be achievement. But it, no, and then but it's when, not. And we, don't do, and we don't do the story when we revise it. We only do this. That's not true. I hear it all the time. But the revision, you know what? Guys, you can talk you about the stats, but it's whether or not the people feel it. But actually, feel people it. are feeling it on top they of are? it. Yes, that there was a very no. There was really interesting data that came out about people's perspective on the national economy versus their state economies. And they looked at all of the swing states. And people thought the national economy was terrible. It was like at a negative 30. And individual economies in Wisconsin, in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona, all the states that you need to win to become president. Uh, so why president is Trump ahead in those states? He's, well, first of all, if you look at it, those polls were within the he, margin of error. I have talked to you ahead. about in right, all but the one. margin of error. It is a jump ball. That's what's going on. If this was the worst economy in the world, which is what you would say about it, there is no way that we would be even close to this. It would be a runaway for the person on the top of the Republican ticket. And it's not because people know wage growth is up. 
It's going past the rate of inflation. Unemployment, 3.8%, 26-month streak. We haven't seen that since the 1960s. You have to give some level of credit when credit is due. You have to. And you have I to just give, zoned out, Jessica. I was looking at notes for the next segment. And you have to give credit <laughs> to the American people who assimilate this and make their own judgment. Sure, and they voted Coming for Joe Biden. They'll do a it again. bombshell. Okay, bye. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.